Good morning. Welcome to all of you here joining us live and to those joining us on Facebook. A reminder this week, our Thanksgiving service is Tuesday at 7 o'clock. Next Sunday, there will be the hanging of the greens following the service. So please remember to stay and help with that. Don said we're hoping to get this done in an hour. Worship assistants are needed for the Christmas services. Uh, take a look at the list in the bulletin. If you can help, please speak with Mary Thomas. And the annual meeting will be December 11th following the service. At this time, let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the beauty of this day. We give you thanks for the opportunity to join together in worship of you. We ask that you be with us, inspire us by your spirit, and help us as we uplift our hearts and voices to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Rejoice for Christ is King, O Lord and King of all. Rejoice, give thanks, and sing the triumph evermore. Lift up your hearts, lift up Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who redeems us in Christ Jesus, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have ignored voices that call for your justice. 
We have neglected actions that witness to your righteousness. We have spoken and acted in ways that disrupt your beloved community. We truly repent of the things we have done and left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Restore our troubled spirits so that we may live in newness, follow the way of the Spirit, and build up the body of Christ. Amen. Rejoice and be glad. God hears the prayers of all who cry out and restores us to life through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. I therefore declare to you the forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sing to the King who is coming to reign. Glory to Jesus, the Lamb that was slain. Life and salvation is of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We pray together. O oh God, our true life, to serve you is freedom, and to know you is unending joy. We worship you, we glorify you, we give thanks to you for your great glory. Abide with us, reign in us, and make this world into a fit habitation for your divine majesty. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first lesson is found in the 23rd chapter of the book of Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people, it is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them so I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to the fold, and they 
shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now read Psalm 46 by whole verse. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble with its tumult, God is in the midst of them. It shall not be shaken. God shall help it at the break of day. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Behold, the one who makes war to cease in all the world, who breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shields with fire. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. The second lesson is from the first chapter of the book of Colossians. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father, who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is in the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn of the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God has, was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Luke, the 23rd chapter. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. 
Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. What do you remember? Remember the main? Remember, remember the 5th of November? If you tell the truth, you don't have to remember anything. The 1st of April is the day we remember what the what are the other 364 days of the year? What things do you remember? I love to garden, and I've been gardening since my grandfather gave me my first plot of ground when I was about eight years old. Before that, I helped in his garden or in my mother's. It comes as second nature to me, but it's more than that. When I garden, I remember. I remember my youth. I remember my mother, my grandmother, my grandfather. Gardening brings them close to me once again. I think this works not only with gardening, but even cooking the same things, the same recipes our parents did or doing other things the way that those gone on before us did. We do it because it's what we know, what we have learned, but it's a part of us, just like our traditions concerning family gatherings like Thanksgiving or Christmas. We do them because we want them to continue. When our traditions, customs, and even daily tasks go on, so do the ones who have gone on before us. We bring all of our loved ones close to us by remembering the things that they did or the things that they said and by doing the things that they did. Remembering is important. Our gospel lesson for this morning may seem out of place to us. It's one that we know well from Good Friday. It's the story of the two criminals who were crucified alongside Jesus, one on his right, one on his left. And one of the criminals complains to Jesus, saying, if you are the Christ, the chosen one, save yourself and us as well. The other one says, you and I are here because we deserve to be. He did nothing to deserve this. Then he says to Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. To which Jesus responds, today you will be with me in paradise. Remember. That's all the thief asks of Jesus to be remembered. And Jesus tells him that he will be in paradise with him. Now that's remembering. Remember me 
and he gets paradise with the Savior. We too are remembered by Jesus, and we too have the same promise of paradise with him and with our loved ones. But just as important as it is to be remembered is to remember ourselves. It's important to remember who it is that gave us life and all of creation. It's important to remember, but also to share the message, because remembering goes both ways. I remember years ago, a group of church people were asked what they feared the most. And all sorts of answers came out. But the one that said the most was the one that stated, what will our legacy be? Will anyone remember us? Remembering is vital. We need to remember and to be remembered. Today is Christ the King Sunday. It's also known as the Sunday of the Fulfillment. God's promise of salvation, but also the kingship of Christ is fulfilled. It is accomplished. Christ sits on the throne of heaven. He's king of heaven, the earth, the universe, and all of creation. At this time, we hear end of time things because this is also the last day of the old church year. Next Sunday, with the beginning of Advent, we begin a new church year. And at this time, we begin to think back and to remember not only the passing church year, but the passing year in general. We think of our lives and what we have done and what we have not done over the past year. How have we helped those in need around us? How have we proclaimed God's grace and favor to those whom society has cast aside? We look to the end of all things and wonder, what will our place be? God will remember us. God remembers us better than we remember God. Our second lesson for this day reminds us that under God's reign, everything falls into place. All of creation and all of God's creatures will be reconciled to God in the end. On the last day, we will be remembered, and we will be in paradise with Christ. God does not forget us. Let us not forget God and the many wondrous blessings that he has given us, especially the gift of life in his Son, Christ the King. Remember. Amen. Let us now take a minute to pause and wait and listen for what God is saying to us.
let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United with your saints across time and place, we pray for our shared world. Holy God, we pray for your church. Help and guide all denominations and faith-based organizations in creative and collaborative ministries and increase our work for the sake of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we pray for your earth. Protect waterways from pollution and animal habitats from destruction. Direct us in careful stewardship of waters, plant life, and animals. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Holy God, we pray for the nations of the world. Instill in every leader's heart a desire for justice and peace. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Holy God, we pray for all who are undermined or oppressed in any way. Amplify the voices of the unheard and break open stubborn systems of injustice. Bring about your righteousness and fill us with your redeeming light. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Holy God, we pray for this congregation. Guide our pastor and lay leaders. Help us find and accept fresh ideas. Give this congregation a renewed spirit of discipleship and service. Comfort those who are lonely and afraid. Help and strengthen all caregivers. And help and comfort all those in ill in body, mind, and spirit especially Bud, Donna, Minerva, Ray, Ginger, Nancy, Shirley, Betsy, Terry, Laura, Sue, Gladys, Carolyn, Joyce, Gus, Mimi, and those we now name in the silence of our hearts. We also pray for these families of the congregation, Leah, Dot, Peggy, and Penny. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Holy God, we give thanks for all who have died in the faith. Console us who mourn and comfort us with the beautiful promise of life in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Accept these prayers, gracious God, and those known only to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and King. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. I invite you to share the peace with one another.
Please be seated. Please stand if you're able. Let us pray. Blessed are you, maker of all things, as you have entrusted us with all that you have created. Now gather our gifts, nourish us with this sacrament, and send us to those who hunger and thirst. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all the drinks, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ spreads a table before you. Gather here with all the saints. Those of you who are communing in your pew, Open the top seal. Take out the wafer and place it in your mouth. The body of Christ given for you. Open the second seal. Reveal the juice. The blood of Christ shed for you.
understand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, most gracious God, that you have fed us with the bread of heaven and given us a foretaste of paradise. Enliven us to be your body in the world and to serve those who are in need. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of peace who creates all things and calls them good, who makes us alive in Jesus, and who breathes on us the spirit of hope, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Be a blessing in the world. Thanks be to God.